Hi there, I'm Barbara of Pongo. In this tip, I'd like to share with you some best practices we've discovered for organizing your pictures using Pongo. Our Pongo members have the ability to upload photos, use the gallery to organize them quickly and easily by person, then share their pictures with as many free guests as they like. This tip describes the organizing features available to members and some best practices for using them. If you've heard all this before, just fast forward a stitch or two to an area that's new to you. Computers are good at detecting and collecting faces. Why waste your time doing it yourself? All you have to do is put names to faces. That tells Ponga who's who and the software can take care of the rest. Ponga finds every picture of each person, labels them, collects them all into neatly labeled albums. With the job done, now you can focus on putting pictures back into circulation and collect stories. So here we are ready to upload photos. All I do is drag and drop the photos or even a whole folder of photos. You see them all appear with little thumbnail images and a preview of their size. I can remove a few if I'd like, then hit upload. Notice that the pictures float off the screen as the upload completes and when it's done, the entire batch of photos is collected in a single time-stamped album. That's super useful as a way to mirror the organization you are already using. Let's say you upload a batch of photos given to you by an aunt. You want to keep them together since the fact that they came from her might help you figure out who someone is in a photograph or why it was taken. That kind of information is helpful to family history. Here it is in action. Shortly after you upload your pictures, you'll get a notification to tell you your gallery is ready. Follow the link. Once in the gallery, you'll see a list of people you've already named down the left and a row of people to be named here. Reference portraits in this row are sorted in the order of frequency. Now, just strap in and answer the question, do you know who this is? If you just know, then just hit the green Add Name button or hit Return and start typing. The name you add will be applied as a label to that person's face in that picture and all others in the collection. An album will also be created to collect all pictures of that person. If you aren't sure who it is, that's okay. You've got two options, the yellow skip button or the red ignore button. Now, also a few key keyboard shortcuts make it easier. Think of your return key as yes and your tab key as go on. When you first see a portrait, the return key lets you start typing the name right away. The tab key lets you see a quick look. And that is a great reminder of which image a portrait came from, the title of the image, and how many appearances that portrait represents. Each time a person is named in the gallery, a comment is added in every picture that matches the portrait you named. Once you've added a name, we add it to your type ahead list that appears as a drop down menu when you start typing with just a few keystrokes. Matching faces to names is tricky since each of us goes through a dozen or more subtly different faces as we age. That's why you might see a dozen or more portraits of the same person in the gallery. By letting you apply the same name to your son as a baby, then again as an adolescent and as an adult, you're effectively teaching Ponga that all of these portraits are the same person. That means that names distinguish people. If you have several families members with the same name, use generation names like junior, senior, or nicknames to distinguish them, much as you do around the dinner table. Nicknames, even acronyms, combined with type ahead features can make it easy to label someone with a couple of keystrokes. Our face detection features are very good. Sometimes it picks up strangers at the next table in restaurants or people in photographs on the wall. You'll see the ignore button is there for just that purpose. Keep in mind though, ignore is ignore. Once you hit ignore, we won't bother you with that person again. So if you aren't sure, but you want to come back later, then hit skip. That might be your better choice. Back in the library, you see the full collection of photos you've added. Now they're sorted in the order in which changes were made. I mentioned that a comment is added in every picture that matches the portrait you named. You might notice pictures rearranging themselves as labels are added as comments. I like to think of that as the gallery gnomes doing their magic. Also, notice the albums down the left side. There's an album for each person named. This is my dearest great aunt. 
Notice that this album includes every picture I have of her where I was able to identify her face. Open a picture and I see my great aunt's face with a selection box around it. When I mouse over it, the reference portrait I use to add her name previews. Mousing over the faces of the other two people in this photo shows my grandfather when he was young and his firstborn daughter, my aunt. While we're here, let's update the title for this picture. The default here comes from the file name, and I can also add a description of a couple hundred words to including links. Oh, I just happen to have one in, my, in here I can paste in. There we go. So now that you see how it works, let's talk a little about best practices. Let's start by discussing how to handle mistakes. Generally speaking, there are two cases, so let's start with the first one. This is the spelling mistake you might make in the gallery. When you fix it, you want to fix it everywhere. This little girl, Nicole, had the childhood name Nikki, which incidentally everyone seemed to spell incorrectly. So let's use this technique to correct typos, update nicknames, and add married names, and so on. And the best part is it fixes the label everywhere. Since I'm going to be sharing the picture with her cousins who don't know her by that name, I decide I'll update it first with her first and last name. Tap on her face. The reference portrait appears in the sidebar. I tap on the blue linked text, and that takes me to the face details page. I open edit details and change Nikki to Nicole Nikki Nicholson. This time I have just this one picture, but making the change here corrects not only the label, but ensures that the name appears correctly so that the label is changed in the picture, the album name is updated to reflect the new name, the drop-down menu is updated in the gallery, making it add Nikki's full name when another picture of her appears, and finally, notifications go out to people included on pictures where the name was added that a change has been made. The second case is to correct matches. Let's say you open a picture, like this one, and realize that a beautiful 10-year-old girl has been given her brother's name. He's adorable, but that's not okay. So to fix it, all we do is tap on her face, and again, the one we know was mismatched. So notice that we can now get to the face details page directly from the preview. That's a little pro tip. And this time, we're going to the change person. It says this face was matched with this person, Moreau. That's not right. Change person. Tap change person, then new person, a couple of keystrokes, and we can find Pua from the drop-down list that appears by typing her name. There she is. Tap it, and the match is corrected. So here's a special case of the mismatched face. What if you realize it isn't the person that's labeled, but you don't know who it is? In this case, I know it's not Thomas Jones, but I also don't know who it is. I tap the face again, go to the face details page, tap change person, then say done. That returns the person's face back into the gallery. Now here I'm back in the gallery after an upload, and there's that guy again. Now I'm sure I don't know who it is, so this time I'll skip him so I can take another look when I review my gallery with my Aunt Mary. If you think someone might know, just skip and come back. If you ignore someone, they're gone, and you lose the ability to detect them in another picture, so save that for those strangers at the other table. There's one more useful fix. Ponga will choose the very clearest and most full frontal face to represent a person in the reference portrait. It does this by choosing that image from all of the uploaded p images of that person in the batch in which they were first identified. But sometimes that picture is a particularly poor choice. Here, little Nikki's face is partially blocked by Dumbo. Even as the other pictures are added, the reference portrait remains the same. Well, you can fix that. Just find the very best face from among all of the pictures that you now have of that person. Oh, here's a good one. Open that picture, go to the face details page again, and recycle the face. Works like a champ. So let's talk a little about best practices. There are all sorts of details that can make matching names to faces complicated. The faces like names of distant relatives can be hard to distinguish. There can be a strong family resemblance and families often reuse names across generations. So the most important concept to keep in mind is context. Let me show you. First, name the people you're sure of right away. Using sis or mom is fine. You can refine it later when you know who you want to share pictures with. Two, if they look familiar, but you're not sure, just hit tab and explore the quick look. That lets you see the face in context of the picture. Three, 
The name you use becomes an album title, so keep it simple. Starting with honorifics like Mr., Ms., Lord, Lady can get complicated. You can add that later, or you can just include it as a comment. Four, you can give two or more people exactly the same name in the gallery, but don't. It's confusing as the old Bob Newhart character Daryl and my other brother Daryl. Don't confuse yourself. Nicknames are your friend. Finally, a couple of gallery mechanics. Skip is great when you're confident you'll remember or you want to walk through the ones you skip with someone else. It's a great thing to do over Zoom. Two, ignore is perfect for those shadows, distant smudges, or obviously irrelevant extras who happen to show up at the next table and in every family album. So to wrap up, I started this tip with a review of how to use the face details page to make two kinds of corrections to face naming problems, correcting name and fixing mismatched names. I also walked through some best practices for names themselves and applying those names in the gallery, specifically when to use add name, skip and ignore buttons. The Roots Tech organizers asked us to give two courses in addition to our videos here in our booth. One describes a way to use Ponga to zoom over the generation gap with pictures. The second talks about using Ponga to connect stories in pictures to archives in permanent.org. One of our members, Victoria McGregor, is also giving a course titled Family Tree Presentation and Sharing, which is absolutely inspiring. Take a moment to check those out. We're also offering a series of notes, tips, and downloadables, capturing some of the detail mentioned in this and our other videos. Look for those links in our virtual booth. During the live session of Roots Tech 2022, we'll be available for live chat, workshops, and Zoom conversations from our booth. Look for the links there. We'll be delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you personally and answer any questions you might have. Finally, in celebration of this annual Roots Tech program, we have some special offers and invitations available from our website at ponga.com. Again, thank you so much for watching.